My name's Elia Locardi, and I'm a full-time travel and landscape photographer. I've teamed up with F-Stoppers and the filter company Nisi to produce eight unique mini tutorials to show you how I use these filters as I travel the world looking for the perfect photograph. Subscribe to the channel below to join this adventure and welcome to Puerto Rico. Throughout this series, Nisi and F-Stoppers are giving away over $600 worth of filters and tutorials. If you want to enter all eight contests, make sure you click the link in the description below every time a new video is released. In this first episode, I want to walk you through the basics of each one of these filters, how to use them, and how you can apply them to your style of photography. We have a few different shapes and sizes here, square, rectangular, and circular. If you're new to photography and new to long exposure, you may be mostly familiar with these circular filters. Now, these are solid neutral density filters, and these circular ones basically screw right on to the front of the camera. A useful tip to avoid having to buy too many of these circular filters is to just buy one at the largest size, which in this case, my largest one is an 82 millimeter thread. And then instead of buying different sizes, buy different adapter rings instead. That way you can use one filter with every lens. These are all solid neutral density filters ranging from three stops, six stops, 10 stops, all the way up to 15 stops and it gives us the ability to really drag that shutter, increase that shutter speed to get soft and silky water, streaky clouds, and any number of long exposure effects. These circular filters are really great, but if you want as many options as possible in photography, the square filter system is definitely my favorite. Now it may seem more complicated, but it's actually kind of simple. It works almost in the same way. The first thing you have is a ring that mounts to the camera. Just like the other filters, you have different adapter rings depending on the thread size of your lens. But this goes directly onto the lens itself. Now the nice thing is, if you're just using these square filters, this is really easy to attach to the front. So rather than having to screw on and unscrew or put a different filter on, we can simply take one of these and slide it into the front of the filter. But it gets even better than that. These filters have the option to add in a polarizer. Now, polarizers are really useful in the field to get rid of reflections or to be able to see through water. And the nice thing about this is it's really easy to add to the front by lining up these white lines here on this new filter holder and just attaching it this way. And once it's attached, I can even rotate it. In the field, I'll be able to show you examples of how to use this. Once this is mounted, you can put this back on top and then select the amount of neutral density you want to use. Now that's where these square filters come in. As you can see, these are solid filters. So they're the same as the round in the intensity. So three, six, 10, all the way up to 15. And these slide right in to the front of this filter system. And there are three different slots that we can use to even stack different filters on top of each other. While this is just a solid filter in the filter holder system, the nice thing is that once this is set up, we can also use different filters, these rectangular graduated neutral density filters. And we can stack these on top. So we can have a base of neutral density to drag the exposure, and then we can even add another layer. In this case, a three stop graduated neutral density. Something like this gives us the ability to control the exposure on the top of the frame, different than the bottom of the frame. And the nice thing about this, and something you can't do with a circular filter, is actually rotate this around, and this will depend on where your horizon is and where you want to put the graduated neutral density. This filter right here, the blue one, is one that I've actually never used in the field. It's called the Natural Night filter. When we shoot cityscapes at night, it's really hard to get that balance of color. We have a lot of artificial light and we have a dark sky. So this filter is supposed to filter some of that light and give us more variations in tones. In addition to all of these filters, I also have three filters that I'm pretty excited to use. These are different intensities of the black mist effect filter. These are pretty cool for photography, but what I'm really excited about is using these for video. We should be able to get a really nice misty sort of cinematic look. I also have a couple filters that are more specialty filters. I just want to point out that you can buy 
almost any filter combination out there. This is a six stop neutral density with a polarizer built in. So it's kind of cool, but very specific and it comes in a screw on version. So it's kind of nice in a video situation. And speaking of filters that are great for video production, they also make variable ND filters. So when you put this on the front of the camera, this actually changes between one and five stops. So very minimal to moderate. In video production, this is awesome for being able to go into and out of different lighting situations. You can just change this on the fly to adjust the exposure. That pretty much wraps up this quick introduction to what all of these filters are. Now I'm excited because it's time to learn how to use these in the field on location here in Puerto Rico. If you want the full details of any of these filters, you can find links in the description below. And if you want to follow along with this eight part tutorial series, make sure to subscribe to the channel. All of these videos are going to be shot here in Puerto Rico, but if you want to travel all over the world and learn about landscape, travel, and cityscape photography, we've created a video series called Photographing the World, and there are four parts. You can find them at fstoppers.com slash store.